Okay, so for a demo on what can be achieved with OCI Vision, I thought I would use, for this case, the graphical interface provided by Oracle Cloud. So on my Oracle Cloud, I have Vision AI here. And when I join, I click on this link, I am prompted with the Vision Overview, right? Here I have a lot of resources. I am able to access documentation in case you want to use other sources of accessing the Vision AI service. So in case you want to use the API through HTTP requests, if you want to use the SDK with any programming language that you want, if you want to use it with Ruby, with Python, with C, you have uh, some uh, tools here as well. And also with the OCI CLI, with the command line interface as well. And you also have a self-paced workshop that is one hour long here that you can use on Live Labs. So I thought I would just go through the most important components and just show you what can be done through the interface. Remember that for vision, we have uh, image classification, which is going to tell us what kind of element is predominant in the image in case there are several. Well, in this case, for example, that we have a electrical grid and some trees and a road. I will just show you that with the request, we're just using an HTTP request on the background and we are asking it for a number of five results maximum. And this image has been previously uploaded to object storage in order for us to, to do this processing. And you see that the response is just a set of labels, a set of classes with some confidence scores attached to them that tell us what kind of information there is on the image. So in this case, we have an overhead power line with a 99% confidence, a road as well, transmission tower, vegetation, and electrical supply. Of course, you can modify the number of maximum results if you want. And also we have this other JSON object here called ontology classes, which tells you uh, the relationship between different elements. So in this case, there aren't relationships in between them. But for example, if you have a color and the color is associated specifically with a plant, then it might be here, you might get red in parentheses color and the parent name would be the plant itself. So in that case, you would be able to infer some additional relationships in between the classes that have been identified. So if I upload, imagine that I want to upload another picture. I have this AI car that I generated the other day with generative AI. And I said, well, this is a Red Bull car, right? It's going to tell me even if uh, this is generated by computer, it's not a car, but of course the model is trained to also detect things that are very similar to what's real. And you can see that this is not real because the logos are just completely random. And even then it's going to tell me that there is an automotive wheel system, a wheel, a tire and a car. But you see that this information doesn't really give me a lot of leeway to work with, right? I just have classes on the image, but nothing else. It doesn't tell me the location of each one of the items. And this is something that if I am a computer vision practitioner or a company, a software company, I would like to have. So for that, I'm going to go to object detection, which is kind of the same as image classification. But in this case, if I upload the same picture into the object detection here, it's going to detect with a bounding box. It's just a rectangle that locates the item on the screen, right? So it tells me that there is a 97% chance that this bounding box corresponds to a car. And then it identifies three wheels as well. As you can see, it's all wheel and tires, wheel, tire, wheel, tire. And you will see that on the response, we have kind of this JSON structure as well with a confidence. And then we have something called a bounding polygon. And it tells you the normalized vertices. A normalized vertex is going to be size independent. What I mean by that is that it doesn't matter what kind of width and height the picture has. It's going to independently tell you with a percentage of the screen where the vertices of the bounding box are. 
So in this case, you will see that the first vertex corresponds to the top left. We have 4.1%. So it's starting from here, which is the pixel 00. zero and this is the, the maximum pixel of width and height. And of course, this is the height and this is the width. So if I start going like this, this vertex corresponds to 4% of the width of the image and 24% of the height of the image, right? So if you were to divide this by four, more or less, this would be the first line. Then the second vertex corresponds to the top right. It's almost at the end of the image and at about the same the same height. And then the third vertex corresponds to the bottom right and the fourth one to the bottom left. So this allows us to be more specific and actually infer some information on where each element that has been detected. Then we also have phase detection, which is gonna tell us apart from the bounding box, but also this is going to tell us some landmarks from the face itself. So it's going to tell us where the right and the left eyes are, where's the tip of the nose, if it finds it, and the edges of the mouth. So with that, we have a little bit more coordination and it also allows us to extract or do some calculations on the background. So imagine that I was using Python. Here, I would be able to determine if this person, depending on the distance between the right and the left edges of the mouth, I can infer if this person is smiling or if it's not smiling because it's always going to be proportionate to the bounding box size. So imagine that you have a face that is very large on the image and another one that's very small because it's very distant. Of course, one is going to have a higher distance between the edges of the mouth. But if you compare that distance with the size of the bounding box that is constraining all these points, all these vertices, you're going to get some consistent information, consistent processing that you can do. So all of these people are smiling, but if they weren't smiling, this distance, of course, would be smaller because if I'm not smiling, then my face is going to be, and these two edges are going to be closer to each other. Also, I can process where each person is looking at, if they are looking towards the right or towards the left, just by looking at these five points from a three-dimensional perspective. Then we have text detection, and text detection is great for things like pictures with text in it. Text detection can be used in many domains, right? For example, it could be used to develop or to help companies that try to infer information from the images itself. License plate recognition, if you were a government and you were trying to track license plates in a CCTV camera, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of things that you could do. And then you can also extract the results by words or by lines as well. If you just wanted the words and you see that the response, apart from all the bounding boxes on the text, it tells us if it finds a specific word or a specific line of words, it's going to tell us the confidence of it finding it and the bounding polygon with the normalized vertices on top of it. And finally, we would have Document AI, which starting next month, right now this is December 11th, starting from January 1st, 2024, all Document AI features are going to be available in the Document Understanding Service. So you will have to go here to the Document Understanding Service, and this is going to contain this new service from Vision AI. And this is another part of computer vision, of course. It allows you to extract text, but it's more related to documents instead of just being images or random images. This allows you to get info from documents and not only just this kind of text data. You also you can also extract tables like spreadsheet information. You could also upload uh, an Excel spreadsheet, PDFs where you want to extract information. Imagine that you are a company that wants to automate their payment processing system. So you might find yourself with a lot of receipts. This allows you to get information from the receipts, like which was the customer, uh, the date of the purchase, the amount, which employee did the sale, etc., etc. You see here, we have a receipt and we can extract key values from it, right? This is a fake invoice. But it tells you all of the information, right? It tells you which is the vendor address, 
what is the invoice ID, the date, and the total taxes, the subtotals, etc., which is going to be amazing for you because it's going to automate all these processes very quickly and with a very cost effective method. And lastly, I mean, we have document classification. It's uh, this document, for example, is most likely a bank statement. Imagine that you are an HR company and then you're looking to only filter those resumes that find or fit a specific domain knowledge. Imagine then we can apply document classification first to only obtain those documents that are closer to a resume than any other type of document to filter out spam submissions. And then we can go to key value extraction and extract by the resume uh, a lot of information. And lastly, if you want to develop your own object detection system, imagine that you have a, an object that you think is not very common on the real world, or it might not be created by the set of classes that have been trained with OCI. Imagine that I want to create an object detection system to detect Snow White. I would have to create a new data set and then just give it a lot of images. So this is Snow White. And in this case, I want to create an object detection. I want to draw some bounding boxes around specific objects. And I can either upload my own local files of Snow White or just select them all from object storage if you already have uploaded them to OCI. So first of all, I will need to go into object storage, access my bucket, and upload the pictures to a new bucket. So now I'm going to create a data set, no white data set. It's going to be object detection. And I'm going to select my bucket, Snow White. Okay, I have my six images. And once this is done, I will have to label these images and give it some manual examples of where my bounding boxes are. Where are my objects? Okay, so now I have to label these images with a bounding box and just tell it which is my object. So I can either create this for her face or for the whole body. But just in this case, because I want to detect where Snow White is on my picture, I just want to use her face as an example. So I'm going to go one by one in my pictures and just detect on the image where I can find Snow White. This can be approximate, but the closer you are to the truth, the better it is because it's going to be more accurate in the end. So now I have all my objects labeled. I already have my data set created. If I go to Vision AI, I go into my tests and I create a model. Object detection, I am going to use the existing data set. And I can always either choose the recommended mode, which can take up to 24 hours for training or the quick mode, which might take about an hour. And of course, I'm just using this with five or six examples, but you would like to spend about two to 10 hours, depending on the specific object that you want to detect, how many examples you have, the more, the merrier, of course, you're going to bet, uh, you're going to get a better accuracy in the end in your model. And just remember that after we are done with this, you will need about 100 to 500 examples in order for this to be accurate and not only accurate, but also valid. Because if you don't have enough examples, the model is not going to be able to determine and to split the data into training, testing and validation. So you would need some more than than six examples here. We have already seen all the things that you can do with Vision AI. I hope this demo was useful. And just remember that uh, here you have the documentation and everything if you want to develop the same thing that we have done with the graphical interface, but with some programming uh, on top of it, which is going to be very beneficial 
if you're an engineer or if you're a, a software practitioner that wants to upgrade your, your system with some AI. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one.